Welcome to Groundhog Week. Rishi Sunak, Boris Johnson, in late night talks, vying to become the next leader of the Tory party. It's just astonishing, absolutely astonishing. You're going to have the two guys that were, were at the top of the pile when Johnson started to untangle and, and and here they are vying to be top of the pile again and what difference will it make how is it going to help the country how is it going to help the UK because it isn't the Tory party are desperately fighting to keep themselves alive it's 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 unbelievable I've been reading, I know I've spoken about this before, I've been reading Chums. I only read it when I go to bed and sometimes I go to bed and I'm so tired I read it for 10 minutes. So I'm not really getting a lot of reading done. But I read last night and I sit there in bed thinking, oh, that's good. I must tell you that or I must repeat that. Um, so I'm going to read this. Um, I'm going to turn the Kindle off and on again because it might, it's been on a while. I, 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 my intro was Welcome to Groundhog Week and it took me seven bloody takes. I'm just going to turn it off. Because otherwise it will turn off halfway through me reading. So this is from the book Chum, Chums. And this is about the previous leadership, the original leadership uh, race when Boris was, was knocked off. Um, Shortly before the leadership campaign started, Rory Stewart produced a stirring rant that expresses some of the themes of this book better than I can. And this is Rory's piece. I feel that there is a deep lack of seriousness in British politics. I felt as, as soon as I saw us debate Afghanistan that we were not a serious country. The people debating it were not asking serious questions. There's a lot of pantomime on every side, not only the Conservatives, it's Labour too. When I was the Africa, the Africa minister, I was at the dispatch box and people would pop up and say, what is the minister going to do to stop the terrible civil war in Burundi? And then they'd sit down. What is the minister going to do to deal with the human rights abuses in Western Cameroon? And then they'd sit down. What is the minister going to deal with the situation in Togo? Right. And somebody needs to say to them, we do not have an embassy in Burundi. We do not have an embassy in Togo. We're not going to do anything about any of these issues. And what fantasy world do you live in to think that we're going to do anything? So we need to become more serious again. Um, he was quickly knocked off the leadership race by the fifth round. Only the 1980s Oxford politicos, Johnson, Gove and Hunt had survived. There's so much in this book. It really, I mean, I've read it and I've struggled through parts of it because it isn't my normal genre and um, but it's so current it's so current that it's worth reading I've just moved into the chapter now uh, the beginning of the pandemic and looking at the failure by Johnson to lock down soon enough uh, the failure and the and the disgusting disgusting PPE fiasco the amount of money and I saw it somewhere it's in billions the amount of money that was wasted on PPE and um, people um, people making lo you know making loads of money on the backs of people dying on the backs of nurses having to nurse with poor quality equipment absolutely disgusting and those people that made the money have made the money and moved on and and those nurses ha have not moved on and those nurses are still being paid crap um, and are still nursing people and um, putting their lives at risk. It's utterly disgusting and um, it ain't going to change because Ricky Sunak or, or, or Boris Johnson are going to be at the top of the pile. They really shouldn't be there. It shouldn't be them. Um, it's unbelievable. All right. So it's, I start this and you'll get this whenever you get this, probably Monday, um, probably Monday evening. I'm back to two a, get, two a day at the moment because I did the cows and I wanted them to come out reasonably quickly. Um, the, the cows are out in the pasture during the day. They, they, you saw them inside because they'd come in for milking and my invite was to go and meet the cows and to um, see the milking as well. But I 
had low energy yesterday and do today and I cut it down to just meet the cows and actually when I came away that had been enough for me um, not least because it's out of context for me and the French is hard for me and you know French in context is a bit easier so when I'm in my art class I've been doing that for four years and the context is normally art or whatever else we talk about but talking about cows and fertility and insemination and diseases is not in my context and uh, is not in context for me so it, it was it was quite tough and uh, I, I've said sorry to, to Laurence in my description but I always struggle to understand her there are people that I struggle to understand um, my uh, ex-neighbour Magali I always no actually yeah I, I used to struggle to understand her and, and she would slow down for me um, I think it's something to do with different different areas you know the people that come from a different part of the country and and, and uh, you know I've learnt my French in this area and you know anybody that's sort of their French comes from further away it's it's going to be different so yeah I, I, I it's a bit of a struggle so I had had enough I really enjoyed it, it was really inter interesting and I was fine until I um until it started to me uh, for me to feel a bit edgy with the 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 cow that was on heat uh, on Shella um because th there was a risk that she would try to get up on my shoulders and they are enormous those cows there was one cow that i is in the in the vlog um resting in a you know in her bed and she, it's just enormous um it's 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 incredible to be up close to them. I've never been that close to cows and I'm not scared. You know, I mean, Laurent said to me, are you scared? And I went, no, but towards the end there, I was feeling, I was feeling uncomfortable because we couldn't really concentrate on, she was showing me something or talking about something. But if you took your eye off this heifer behind me, um, she was coming up, you know, and it's, she, she might've just wanted, she was curious. And it might mean she just wanted to smell my hand or check me out, but it felt really, it felt a bit risky in the end. So I walked through a lot of cow shit, <laughs> which was funny. Um, uh, and that last bit, the last vlog of um, the the um, the fertility uh, planning was was interesting, but I didn't understand enough of it. I didn't even know really what I was looking at until I looked later on the internet. So, um, so it was nice nice to see something different and um and, and it had been something i'd said to Lawrence months and months and months ago can i come one day and um so it was really nice when she contacted me last week and said do you want to come up um and maybe i'll go back one day for milking but um that was enough for me so we um spoke to um the house sitters for next year um yesterday really lovely to talk to them really lovely couple with three children um, they're going to be coming from Poland so a um, bit of a trek for them a bit of a logistics thing for them to sort out but I know that they will be happy here I know that jazz will be in heaven because you know to have so many people around that will stroke her and hold her and 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 all of the things that she likes getting attention um, I've no doubt she'll have um, spent a lot of time up in bedrooms, which she doesn't do now. We don't let her in bedrooms, but that ain't going to happen when we've got other people living here. So it feels really nice to have sorted that out. And um, and uh, they're a really nice couple. Today we're going to talk to our friends in Prince George and sort out the last part of our journey, which we still haven't done, just to get an idea of timings for that. And I'm off to cook. Um, Cajun chicken and um, Rebecca and Brooke gave us a I think it's called a Hubbard squash pumpkin or something Hubbard it's a blue you know the with the blue skin really nice nutty tasting pumpkin so I'm gonna roast that um, to go with the Cajun chicken and some carrots and and the rest of the carrots and the rest of the pumpkin I'll make soup with for tonight so that's what I'm off to do now it's taken me all morning to get warm it's warming up out here we've got another warm week late October that's pretty good from memory I think we'd already been burning fires for quite a while
this time last year I'm, I keep meaning to have a look but I think we'd already started on our wood and actually we haven't this year we've had two or three fires and, and short fires in terms of one or two three logs on that's it not topped up so we're doing well okay good luck with groundhog week hog, hog I kept saying hod and I'm saying it again groundhog week for all those who are impacted by it and um, good luck <laughs>